The Lord be with you. I'm Greg Faulkner, pastor at Trinity Presbyterian Church in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. During this Holy Week, we have been considering the last days of Jesus' earthly life. And today is Holy Thursday, in the Western tradition often called Maundy Thursday, referring to a passage in John's Gospel where Jesus says in the context of the Last Supper, a new commandment I give you, mandatum, commandment. It's the land word from which we get the our word mandate. Let me read that verse for you. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus gives this new commandment in the context of the Passover meal. Mark's gospel, along with Matthew and Luke's gospels, tell us that it was at the Passover that Jesus has given a new commandment that John speaks of. Mark's gospel doesn't speak of the new commandment, but he speaks of this new interpretation of the Passover meal. Our Jewish friends began Passover last night. They had their first Seder, that wonderful commemoration of God's salvation for God's people. Jesus is at Passover with his friends on what we call Maundy Thursday, and he reinterprets that meal of commemoration that points to God's saving power. Reading from Mark's Gospel. And as they were eating, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. All Christians celebrate what we call the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion or the Eucharist or the Mass or the Divine Liturgy. It doesn't matter what we call it, it's always the same meal of bread and wine or fruit of the vine juice that we share. And whenever we share it, we remember God's great love for us manifested in Jesus Christ. What's interesting about Mark's gospel to me is when he talks about what happens in the Lord's Supper, he uses language that he's used before. In the sixth chapter of Mark, we're told that Jesus has been teaching all day, that many people have come to listen to him, and the disciples say to him, send everyone home that they might eat. But Jesus says, what do we have to feed them with? The disciples are astounded. They don't have enough food to feed everyone. But Jesus takes a little bit of what is found. He blesses it, breaks the bread, and over 5,000 people are fed. The scripture says 5,000 men, so it was a much larger gathering. This feeding of the 5,000 is pointed to as Jesus again takes the bread, blesses, breaks, and gives it, just as he did in Mark 6. In that way, Jesus points to that moment when he shows that he is the source of all fullness and goodness, that he gives us abundantly, that he makes our cup to run over with good things. For us, it's also a meal that points to Jesus' death and resurrection, Every time we gather at the Lord's table, we remember the sacrifice of the Son of God for us and for our salvation. We gather at that feast sometimes and our hearts are heavy when we think about the sin that led Christ to die for us. Other times we come with great joy because we think about the great mercy and love that caused God to come in Christ. On Monday, Thursday, both of those feelings come together our sadness, and our joy. But both of them are bound up in love. We've already talked about love this week. Love is at the center of the entire biblical narrative, God's love for the world. Jesus said that if we were to be his disciples, we would show it 
by love. Perhaps that's why Christians all over the world come to the Lord's table over and over again to be reminded and to be inspired to love. Love means all kinds of things. I, I know to all kinds of people. I like to say at Trinity sometimes that what the big screen and the small screen tell us about love is not all that there is. I still love the definition that I was taught almost 40 years ago by my campus minister and friend, Andy Hunter. Andy used to tell us that if you wanted a biblical idea of love, that this was it. Love is acting in the best interest of the other person, period. Andy told us that love was not just about emotions or feelings, though that is part of it, but it's finally about acting. And if it's the love that God has shown us, then it's acting in our best interest, that that's what God has done in Jesus Christ. And we who are his followers are to love people in that way. On this Monday Thursday, this Holy Thursday, may God help us to love one another. May God help us to act in the best interest of others. And every time we're able to come to the table, might we be enlivened by the love that God has for us in Christ and share it with the world.